Pancho. <laughs> he wants to give his law school tips as well. <laughs> That why will always lead you back to your readings and back to law school. These are my law school study tips. Pancho! This is Pancho! <laughs> he wants to give his law school tips as well. <laughs> so cute! So cute! You know what? I heard some law schools nowadays have stress relief programs and the students are allowed to bring their dogs. Parang therapy dogs for law school. <laughs> like my brother in Ateneo Law has brought our family pug to Ateneo Law. They call it Paw School. <laughs> that would have to be the best tip ever. <laughs> okay, Ben. I have to get to the real tips now. <laughs> Bye! Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Tina, I'm a corporate lawyer in the Philippines. Okay, so ever since I started my channel, which was not too long ago, around four months ago, you guys have been asking me for recitation and study tips. I'm actually so happy that a lot of you guys who watch me are going to be lawyers in the future. So hello, future colleagues in the legal profession. I think a good thing about this whole YouTube community is that there really are a lot of tips and tricks that you can get off of the internet these days. Like back when I was a law student, not too long ago, again, hindi ako ganun and that you guys back when i was a law student there were no relatable sources of information about the whole law school experience like my only source of what law school was really like was number one for my dad kasi nga lawyer siya but yun nga he graduated around 1974 from up law so medyo hindi na relatable yung mga experiences niya and number two from upperclassmen and it's not like i would get to talk to those upperclassmen a lot kasi number one hindi kami close and number two syempre busy din sila with their own law school experience so Wala. <laughs> so talagang I hit the ground running in law school, like so many others. <laughs> so one of the good things about YouTube is that I get to reach a lot of you. And in this video, I do exactly that. I am going to be giving you guys some law school study tips. These tips are based on my own experience as a student of the UB College of Law. I graduated in 2012. Studying in law school, of course, is a very personal discipline. And you guys may already have your own study style that works for you. So my study tips that I'm going to tell you in this video may not necessarily work for you. Conversely, your study tips may not work for me. But I'm not going to ako mag aral ever. <laughs> well, unless I'm master. So yeah, I do have a lot of tips to share with you. So let's just get into the video. These are my law school study tips. So my first tip is to plan your study schedule for that day and to stick to that schedule. Why do I say plan your study schedule in the morning before you start your day or the night before and not like a week or a month in advance? It's because you only know how many hours you will have to study based on the coverage assigned by the professor during the previous meeting. Sure, yeah, professors do give you an outline at the beginning of the semester, which lists everything that you will take up in class during that semester. But they will only assign the coverage for the next meeting during the previous meeting. So the professor will not say at the start of the semester, Okay class, for each meeting we're going to take 20 codal provisions and 30 cases. In short, the coverage changes every single meeting. So what I'm saying is, it's impossible to predict in advance what your coverage will be for the next meeting or until the professor says that this is the coverage. As a consequence, it's also impossible to predict your study schedule. So let's say that yun nga, your professor already told you the coverage for your next meeting. So what you do is to take a look at the assigned readings, literally look at the stack of paper that you have been assigned, browse the codal provisions assigned, just to see how long and how complex the coverage is. And then depending on how long and and how difficult the readings are, then you allot your study time accordingly. For example, if it's a major subject like obligations and contracts, five units, yon, you will want to allot like maybe four or five hours of your night studying it, followed by say one and a half hours of studying a minor subject like legal theory. So once you've set your study schedule for the day, follow it. Otherwise, bakit ka pa schedule, diba? <laughs> the point here is that before you dive headfirst into studying, you always have to take a step back and see how long and complex or how short and simple. Is there such a thing as simple in law school? <laughs> but anyway, you have to see how long or how short your coverage for the day is. Mahirap na if you start studying without knowing exactly how long or how complex the coverage is. Otherwise, you're just running into the unknown without knowing where you're gonna stop. So take a step back, assess your readings, and see how long you're going to have to study. Okay, my second tip is to always aim to finish the coverage. In law school, more is always better. Let's say you've been assigned 20 cases for your political law class. Always aim to finish reading all of those 20 cases. Even if it's on a more superficial level. You know, even if your understanding of those 20 cases isn't as in-depth as you would like. It's always better that you can recite the basics of those 20 cases which you finished 
rather than you being able to give a very, very detailed, in-depth recitation for 10 cases. Because 10 cases lang yung natapos mong basahin. Knowing the basics of 20 cases is always better than knowing every little detail of 10 cases. Because ano nang mangyayari sa'yo, when your professor calls another student to recite for those 10 cases that you read, tapos hindi nyo natapos yung latter 10 cases, ano nang mangyayari sa'yo? Wala kang recite at all for the last 10 cases kasi hindi mo sila natapos. That is an automatic flunking grade which you have to avoid at all costs. Because one failing grade in recitation can automatically pull your grade down drastically, especially if the professor doesn't call that many students per meeting. So kunwari, five recits ka lang in SM. It's going to be so hard to pull up if you already have one flunking grade out of those five. So the point here is, if you're assigned 30 cases, read everything. Kahit mabilisan lang. Aminin na natin, we all study in class even as another person is reciting. Diba we're there studying for the next case. You can always use that time in class while someone else is reciting to polish your knowledge of the cases you already read. You know, to get more details in. Polishing lang talaga. What is important is you have already read the basics. My next law school study tip is to mark those portions of your readings that you don't understand or that you don't understand well enough. If there's a portion of your readings that you're stuck in, na medyo mind-boggling, can't understand, then read it, but leave a mark on your notes, case, codal, so that you can go back to it later. What I used to make these markings in law school were colored flags. Alam niyo yung plastic colored flags? It's good if you get the plastic ones because they're recyclable. Huwag niyo kunin yung paper, yung material, because you'll have to dispose of those after a few uses. So I would just stick those plastic flags right beside the parts that I needed to reread, and then I would move on. Don't use highlighters or pens to mark. Kasi ang hassle doon. You'll have to flip back through what you've already read just to see what you have to go back to. Compared to flags, which are immediately visible even when your codal or your book is closed. It's important to be efficient when studying. If you spend too much time dwelling on a provision or a portion of your readings that baffles you, then you will lose crucial time that you need to study other material. Because when you're in law school, you're not just studying for one subject. You're studying for multiple subjects in a day. You really have to be wise with your time. So even if it's as simple as saving time when going back to portions that you don't understand, every minute counts. And remember, like I said, always aim to finish everything. Once you're done with the coverage, that's when balikan nyo yung mga kailangan yung balikan. My next study tip is that if you're a visual person like me, as in you appreciate and you can better understand things if they're in the form of flowcharts, tables, matrices, diagrams, then you are likely a visual learner as well. In short, you would be less likely to understand a concept if it looks like this. and more likely to understand it if it's in a format like this. For example, guys, look at this civil law provision. On its face, it's just like, what? So what you should do, instead of sitting there for 30 minutes trying to understand that block of text, is to literally draw it out, like this. Makes it so much easier to understand, right? I myself, I'm a super, super visual learner. If there's something that I don't understand, I draw it even to this day in practice. For example, if you guys have taken property, then you guys know that if you look at the provisions themselves on builder, planter, sower concepts, di ba ang hirap niyang intindihin if you just read it? But if you plot it out in a matrix form, it makes it so much more comprehensible when it's in a chart format, di ba? So don't hesitate to get visual when you're studying the law. If in doubt, draw it out. My next law school study tip is to read the assigned cases or provisions in chronological order. Let's say that you have some 40-page cases to read and you also have some 3-page cases to read. I know that the tendency is that you'll want na unahin yung mga 3-page cases. Ang nipis eh. But no guys, read everything in chronological order as they appear in your outline because the professor placed them in that order for a reason. Let's say that case 1 is the case that you skipped. And case 2 is the case that you read first. There are three reasons why it's important not to skip. Number one, case 2 might be an expansion or a narrowing of a doctrine that's in case 1. Another thing is case 2 might have explicitly overturned a doctrine that's in case 1. And lastly, case 1 and case 2 
might actually be contradictory because some professors do do that. Sinasama nila yung cases about an old doctrine that was subsequently overturned or naglalagay sila sa outline ng cases with two contradictory doctrines and then they will ask the student who is reciting to compare and contrast the two cases. Nakakaloka, di ba? <laughs> Sometimes also, if cases are related, and by related, I mean they have similar doctrines or they apply the same provision of law, then there's a high likelihood that your professor will ask you to recite those related cases. So when you're studying, you really have to look at your cases as a whole and you have to be able to relate them to each other. My next law school study tip is before memorizing provisions, you have to be sure to understand them first. When I was a law school newbie, <laughs> as in noob, I used to hear some professors say, Ah, in law school, you don't need to memorize. You just need to understand. Paano mo nasabi? That is so wrong. In Philippine laws, whether criminal, civil, administrative, political law, there are so many enumerations that you need to know. Your knowledge of these enumerations will be tested number one in law school, via recitation, midterms, finals, and number two in the bar exam. And obviously, you can't just understand an enumeration. There's just no way around it. You really will have to memorize sometimes. So my tip is this, before even attempting to memorize something, you have to understand it first. If you try to memorize something without having understood it first, then it is very likely that your memorization of whatever it is that you memorized will be very short term. As in one or two days after you memorized it, you will have forgotten it already. I know that when we're studying, we're rushing because we just have so much coverage to finish. That's why law students are speed readers, right? So it might seem to you like a waste of time to try to understand a provision or an enumeration first before immediately trying to memorize it. But trust me, if you blindly memorize something without having understood it first, sobrang superficial and shallow yung retention nyo. Sure, you may be able to recite what you memorized the day after. You know, the next day in time for recitation. But you will have to re-memorize it again during midterms, and again during finals, and again during bar review. So you see, it really is counterproductive. You think that you're saving time, but really, in the long run, you're not. So my tip is to take that bit of extra time to understand what you're reading, and then memorize. Okay, my next study tip is that when you're reading cases, always write a one-sentence summary of the case in your outline. For example, if the topic in the outline is psychological incapacity and the case that you just finished reading is Antonio versus Reyes, in that case, the wife's repeated lying was considered as abnormal and pathological and amounted to psychological incapacity. So in your outline, beside the case, write the most important doctrine derived from that case. So here, for example, it would be repeated lying equals psychological incapacity. This one-liner in your outline will really help you when you're called on to recite. And in that split second before you stand up, you have to recall what happened in that case. Also pala, don't forget to mark landmark cases. What I would do before is in my outline for yung mga landmark cases, I would literally write landmark case beside that case. Those one sentence summaries will be a helpful reference for you when you're reviewing for midterms and finals because you'll immediately be able to see what each case is about without having to comb through each case one by one. And for those cases which you mark as landmark cases, you know that you'll have to go back to the original scrap copy of the case. You'll read it again in the original, hindi by the digest lang. My next study tip applies to reading cases. Use different colored highlighters for the facts, the issue, and the ratio. This tip is useful because when you have to go back to a case, whether you're reviewing it again right before recitation or because you're rereading it when you're studying for finals or midterms, then you can easily zone in on what you're looking for in the case. So you'll know that if you want to review the facts, look at the orange highlights. If you want to review the issue, look at the purple highlights. If you need to brush up on the ratio, then look at the green ones. Those were my exact color codes before in law school. Orange for facts, purple for issues, and green for the ratio. Meansan, pag nagbabadali, I would not highlight the issue anymore. I would just encircle it and put an asterisk on it. But I would always have orange for facts and green for ratio. Color coding is a good visual cue because it immediately tells you what you're looking for and where to find it. It saves a lot of precious time when you're going over your readings on a related matter, you guys. And I have been guilty of this as well. Do not over-highlight your readings! As in yung tipong hinahilight nyo na yung buong paragraph except for one word. <laughs> 
be strategic when highlighting and highlight only the most important parts. You don't need to highlight everything that you feel is important because there are other ways that you can emphasize what you want to emphasize. Like for example, underlining or encircling. So obviously, if you highlight everything, the result is pretty much as if you highlighted nothing. <laughs> So use that stabilo sparingly. In law school, so that I would not over-highlight, I would do a mixture of highlighting, and circling and underlining. Just huwag kayo mag-over-highlight. Sobrang visual clutter siya. Nakaka-confuse siyang tingnan. My next study tip applies to codal or statutory provisions. Break down long paragraphs into shorter portions. When staring at long codal provisions or paragraphs that are super long, it just gets very overwhelming. So you have to break down those long paragraphs to make them understandable. You can't consume a huge block of ice if it's in the form of a huge block of ice. But you can consume it if you break it down into smaller bite-sized portions. I used to do this guys by let's say I was faced with a very very long paragraph. I would put slash marks in between sentences. So right away, just by putting a simple slash mark, you would see the break or the division of ideas. You guys know that a lot of provisions of law have so many different ideas jam-packed into one single provision. So to break it down and make it bite-sized, then when you're reading the provision, lagyan yun na agad ng slashes in between ideas. For example, you're reading the provision, tapos nag-end na yung concept one. So lagyan yun na yung slash. Then you're reading it again, ang haba-haba. Tapos nag-end na yung concept two. Lagyan yun na ulit ng slash. Something as simple as that can really make an intimidating looking provision much more understandable. Okay, my next study tip applies to when you have to memorize the general rule and the exception or exceptions. My tip is this, use a color or symbol to mark the general rule and then use only one mark to mark the exception. For example, if you're reading a codal, highlight the general rule. For the exception, use a symbol. For example, I would highlight the general rule. And then for the exception, I would use a symbol na parang circle siya with an X inside. So again, the general rule would be easily apparent and so would the exceptions kasi may symbol na siya. The good thing about this technique is it saves you time when you're studying or reviewing because you can immediately zone in on the general rule and quickly see the exceptions to that general rule. Keep in mind that you do not just study material once. Rather, you actually review your material again for midterms, again for finals, again for your bar review subjects in fourth year, and again during bar review. If you highlight the general rule and you mark the exception in the exact same way, so parang general rule, orange highlighter, exception, orange highlighter pa rin, when you go back to the material later, it will be so hard to identify which the rule and the exception is because everything just looks like one big chunk of highlighted text. Pare-pareho yung itsura eh. But if you mark the general rule a certain way and mark the exception a different way, when you're reviewing, you can immediately see, ah, this is the general rule. Ah, these are the exceptions to that general rule. Efficient. My next study tip is, when reading cases, do not be afraid to use digests, but do not rely solely on them. There are so many sources of digests. Textbooks, the internet, your digest pool in class. Digests have been demonized before. They've gotten a bad rap. But contrary to this view, digests are actually good. Digests are your friends. Use them. The warning here, however, is that you should not just read digests instead of the actual case. Instead, you should use digests to spot the issue. And once you know that issue, use that to go back to the actual scrap copy of the case. This is how I used to do it. A digest is usually divided into three parts, right? The facts, the issue, the ratio. I would very quickly browse the issue portion of the digest. And then once na nakita ko yung focal issue sa case, saka ko babasahin yung actual scrap case. The great thing about that technique is that it lets you see the big picture, you know, the meat of the case, the bone of contention, right away. Because when you look at the case, it's like this. Eh. But once you quickly look at the digest, your focus narrows. Eh. So it becomes like this. So once you know that from the digest, na, ah, ito yung major issue ng case, then that's when you go back to your scra, your actual case. So for example, if the digest says, issue, whether or not the offer of Juan to Maria had been legally accepted by Maria, despite the absence of a written acceptance by Maria, resulting in a perfected contract. You know that when you read the actual scra case, you can just gloss over the other issues. You know that you're going to be focusing on the facts and the ratio related to that issue of whether there was legal acceptance by Maria of the offer of Juan. So you know that you're not going to be wasting your time on other irrelevant issues. So the bottom line here is to use digests to supplement your cases but not to substitute them. 
My next study tip is to vary your study style according to the professor and the subject. As law students, one thing that we forget is that professors are people too, not evil dictators. As people, naturally they have their own quirks, styles, likes, demands. So my tip here is that at the start of the semester, while your classmates are reciting, don't just sit there sweating, praying to God that you won't be called. Instead, observe how your professor conducts recitation. Does that professor ask for the provision of law first? and then ask for the cases applying the law after? Do they ask you about the issue in the case first and then ask you to narrate the facts after? You know what I mean? When you have this information, you can adjust your study style according to that professor's recit style. If you notice that that professor asks students to compare and contrast cases, then you know that you have to make sure that you are noting the subtle differences between cases, even if they seem alike. If you notice that the prof asks about dissenting opinions, then read the dissenting opinions. If you notice that your professor is particularly particular about facts and asks detailed facts, then when you're studying, you know that you can't just skim over the facts. You really have to know them inside out. The point here is, if you know what your professor wants, then you know what you have to focus on when you study. My next law school study tip is to go into studying with the mentality that bar review begins on your first year of law school. This is something that my batchmates and I would repeatedly hear from our professors. And it's something that you hear about because it is consistently true. Bar review is the study period leading up to the bar exam. I would say that 85% of it is about stock knowledge, about refreshing and supplementing your stock knowledge. The remaining 15%, I would say, is for learning the new subject matter that you haven't studied before. I would liken bar exam knowledge to a pyramid, like the pyramids of Egypt. The basic building blocks of your bar exam knowledge are what you have learned as a first year law student. So, parang ganito siya. On top of that are the building blocks consisting of what you learned as a second year law student. And on top of that, what you've learned as a third year law student. And lastly, as a senior law student. If your bottom most building blocks, like yung pinakamababang layer, if they're lacking, kahit gano pa kadami yung knowledge nyo that you piled on top, your pyramid is gonna come toppling down. So first year knowledge is really the foundation on which your entire law school knowledge will be built. And if you don't build that foundation properly, then the rest of your second, third, fourth bar exam knowledge will be faulty as well. I totally get it. Na minsan po mapasok talaga tayo na hindi na tapos yung coverage for the day or hindi ka nabasa at all. And thank you Lord, hindi tayo natawag for that class. When that does happen to you, yes, pasalamatan yun si Lord. But do not leave it at that. Make sure that after class, you still read the coverage that you missed. Remember that if you skip reading the coverage, wala talagang malulugi dyan, kundi ikaw. Because in law school, you're already supposed to be studying for the bar exam. So if you cheat and you say, ah, hindi ko nababasahin to kasi tapos na to last meeting eh, ikaw talaga yung talo dyan. Remember that when you study, day-to-day -day survival is the short-term goal, but passing the bar exam is the long-term objective. So study not just for the professor, but study for you. My next tip is to supplement your studying with Sun Beda Red Notes. I'm not kidding when I say that Sun Beda has the best reviewers on the planet. I and my batchmates used their reviewers the most, more than any other reviewer from any other school. For day-to-day -day class, obviously, Sun Beda reviewers are not enough. But reviewers are still valuable tools because you can use them as references when you're studying your main material. So you basically use reviewers alongside your main material. Have your main material in front of you and study that. But do have your Sun Beda Red Notes beside you so that you can see what the important things to remember are from your main material. Readings get so overwhelming just because of the sheer volume of the things that you have to read. But with Sun Beda Red Notes as your guide, you would immediately know what to remember from your main material. Material. Sometimes, Sun Beda Red Notes even have short one or two liner summaries of cases. So, for example, in your Sun Beda Red Notes, it says Matudan versus Republic 2016 case affirms the 1997 Molina case. Guidelines for Article 36 psychological incapacity are number one, two, three. So, since you saw from your Sun Beda Red Notes that yun yung meat ng Matudan case, then you know that that's the part that you have to focus on the most when you're reading your main material. So Sun Beda Red Notes, or whatever reviewer you prefer, although I still say Sun Beda Reviewer is the best, they can be such helpful guides. The caveat there is just do not use it as your main material. Stick to your outline it. Another thing that's great about Sun Beda Red Notes is that they have mnemonics. Yung parang they get the first letter of the enumeration or the things you have to memorize. For example, the letters are R, S, B, L, P. They transform it into mnemonics na parang Ra, Sa, Be, Lo, Pa. 
So San Beda, thank you for making San Beda Red Notes. They're the best, honestly. My next law school study tip is to go offline. As in turn off your laptop or your phone Wi-Fi. But since mga millennials kayo, tayo. Tayo, tayo. <laughs> if di talaga kaya ng powers, then put your phone on silent and face down on your desk. It is such a distraction if your phone is beside you and you see your phone light up for every Facebook, WhatsApp, Viber, Messenger, Telegram, Instagram, Tinder, WhatsApp, Bumble. <laughs> Alert that comes in. So self-control, my dear children. <laughs> Stay away from your gadgets. There are so many distractions in life, in law school, including in your cases and commentaries themselves. Do not add to that pool of distractions by adding social media in the mix. Just don't forget to tell the important people in your life where you are. Baka kala niya na kidnap ka na. They might already be panicking while you're nose deep in your taxation law readings. My next study tip is to sleep when sleepy. Who can relate to studying in coffee shops just because you know that you're going to give in and sleep if you stay home? I know that law school is about pushing yourself. Pushing yourself to study even when you're down, you're tired, when your brain is in the clouds, and when you're sleepy. But guys, if you are so sleepy to the point of nodding off when you're in Starbucks, then you know that it's time to call it a night and go home. Your brain can no longer absorb anything if you're that sleepy, guys. Sleep. <laughs> And then just get up early to finish whatever it is that you have to study. So that is it, you guys. I hope that you guys picked up a thing or two from this video that you could apply to your own law school experience. I know 100% how difficult law school is. I'm sure that each of you has that why. That why. That reason why you're in law school in the first place. That reason why you're willing to endure the humiliation, sleepless nights, mental anguish. In short, moral damages. <laughs> Whenever you have those moments of doubt in law school, remember to always go back to that why. That why will always lead you back to your readings and back to law school. Even after a bad day, a bad reset, a bad week, a bad exam, like I've said in my 5 myths about law school video, I will leave the link to that video down below, law school isn't a test of intelligence, it's really a test of grit. So the most important tip that I can give you guys is really to keep on trying. Just remember that nothing worth having comes easy. So yeah guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you learned a thing or two and I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, please don't forget to like this video. Please also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification bell below if you guys would like to be notified of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Bye!